afternoon you know what time it is it's that time for the lunch and learn with prosper here from live long digital if you've been watching this for a while i would like to warmly welcome you and um present to you today a lively topic which i think a lot of people are going to enjoy because there's a big big misconception out there and people are not quite sure whether they should use paid ads to promote their small business yay or nay i see joff has just joined us thank you so much for tuning in brother hopefully you're having a fantastic day there i was watching one of your videos it was fantastic chris <laughs> what an amazing uh chat we just had earlier my man and um you opened up my brain to a lot of things i can't wait for the other ones that we will be doing a little bit later on rebecca hopefully having a fantastic day my love um i did see your message yesterday regarding a collaboration i uh, will get back in touch with you and dominic my man how's it going have you figured out how everything else um, gels together in any case as you can see guys i have a community of people that um have been constantly f following my uh lives and if this is your first time tuning in guys you're welcome we basically talk about how to brand market and scale your business um without the whole fluff and chitty chitty bang bang matthew smith how's it going i see today you're excited that power editor is working i just saw um, a post you put up earlier okay the thing is when we talk about paid ads and how to promote our small business a lot of people really get confused and i think matthew you want to stick around for this one because you are now venturing into the online space of helping people to reach out to their customers through adverts okay but it really depends on how that pe that person has done their homework and has laid a platform for their business to actually um you know uh, be profitable and enjoyable when the people come in with um you know from from those ads okay so paid advertising really guys it can actually be a great way to bring people off of you know the social media platforms like facebook instagram and twitter which is what i'm going to be talking about but it could be an expensive endeavor if you don't really know what you're doing, all right? So I'm assuming everybody else that's on this live call today is probably a mid-tier small business person that can't quite afford to pay $500 a day in terms of their ads. But if you do pay that kind of money, maybe this uh, won't be relevant to you, okay? So what I would want to stress out first of all is as we would know, oh, Michelle, how's it going? I'm not ignoring you. I'm just waiting for us to actually have a talk. I cannot get into somebody's website before I've talked to them. It's just protocol, okay? Um, and St. Gisco, how's it going, my man? Thanks for tuning in. Also, guys, we're recording these videos so that we can also put them on YouTube. So if you've missed out on a few videos and you think it's valuable information to you, please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll be putting it in the comments um, in the bottom there. So as we all know, Facebook, Instagram, and all those things only recently started, okay? They're not even over 25 uh, years or 30 years old of which it's still in our generation so if you were there when facebook actually started it was a free enterprise and you could start a page and people would just share your stuff you would have thousands of followers and people everyone in your follower list would see your stuff all right now when facebook became a corporation and they now had board members those board members wanted to get paid mark zuckerberg got married and he had a kid um you know his family needed food so he started charging now for people to reach out um, you know to, to to their customers that they had been amassing all this time which is not bad I mean obviously you would want to you know monetize a platform if you can but what happened now is everybody is still with the misconception that everything has to be free on Facebook or 
if it's not free then i'm not going to be doing it or if they are doing it they're actually doing it wrong if i had a dollar for every time somebody came to me and told me that oh my facebook ads are not working yada yada you know i would be a billionaire by now okay but i just want to break it down to you and you know demystify a few things this is not an official trade for you to learn this is just information that i'm imparting based on my experience so do not take any of this verbatim all right i'm tired of paying lawyers and i'm tired of oh i don't want to pay lawyers any more money saying oh we heard this on proper prosperous life so it might be it so any loss of income or any loss of sales or any loss of friends that are following you on facebook after implementing any of this system please do not even talk to me about it all right use it with your own discretion okay now that we've got all the legalities out there i mean i, I gotta be careful now um you know there's a lot of people that just don't understand what it is that i'm trying to do and really trying to get into my pocket anyway so paid advertising can actually be a really great way to you know guide your traffic from you know the social platforms and um bring them to your website i would want to understand that if you are going to venture into any kind of ads on facebook twitter or instagram you have some solid landing page where people can actually leave their email address and you giving them something um you know in exchange all right at the end of the day what you should realize is not everyone is your customer and whatever offer you're giving them right taking them out from their facebook it has to be congruent with what you are showing them on your website okay rick martin says what legalities <laughs> that's it i quit <laughs> i don't quit man oh you never know there's a lot of people that just take things um you know out of context and yeah yeah I've, I'm, i have i have paperwork <laughs> that i have to appear at some magistrate's court uh and stuff like that but it happens when you're dealing with businesses and people's work you know what i mean anyway let's not have that going uh through this so what i want to tackle today is the three most uh popular platforms which is your facebook instagram and maybe in linkedin for some of you guys and what it is if if it's worth it for you to invest in it and pretty much find out if your business should actually be doing that or just generally being organic authentic and reaching out to customers that way because at the end of the day if you're losing money that money is not going to come back into your pocket all right you might listen to some guru telling you oh throw this kind of money there he can do it you know why because he's got systems he's got a team and he's got um you know stuff behind the scenes that they don't mention or tell you how they got there in order for somebody to come in and and convert as soon as they come in all right um matthew says i'm um, loving playing around with power editor targeting at small amounts that's what i'm talking about i mean power editor is good there's also other softwares like ad espresso that actually really help you zero in power editor i usually find it too cumbersome but i'm happy you're enjoying it then okay so maybe since you're talking about um power editor and stuff like that let's start off with facebook because i was going to start off with google ads you know facebook ads they actually run on on like a pay per click uh or a pay per impression sort of idea which um a, a lot of people don't understand what that means all right if you're paying per impression it means somebody has just seen that advert or that advert is in somebody's news feed that doesn't mean that person has seen that that advert all right so if your campaign really enables you to pay per click you want to choose that option because when somebody actually clicks that advert they have at least raised up their hand to say you know what i'm interested in this information if you're paying per impression Mm, I don't know. I read something in the Huffington Post. It says, you know, thanks to um, the amount of personal information that Facebook now has in its database, they can actually just tell you that we've presented this to so and so people, and you can't deny that. Okay, so you want to make sure that you are targeting the right kind of people with the right kind of, op um, you know, um, um, 
solution to your product and as soon as they see that ad at least they're clicking not just an impression okay so a lot of people are losing money because they think people are seeing their ads no one is waiting on their doorstep or on their Facebook to see your advertising all right so you want to make sure you know anything you you want to target using things that the user actually inputs themselves okay not by Facebook speculation all right I'll give you things like if I'm starting a Facebook profile I'm gonna write my exact age I'm gonna write my exact location my exact uh, education my religion some of the interests you want to be careful about that you know my job title that is something that would be a game changer if you actually start utilizing it if you target by job description the reason being if you target by interests I might be interested in the page that has BMWs on it but that doesn't mean I own a BMW that doesn't mean I can afford to buy a BMW so if you send me ads that have BMW on it I'm not the, the right kind of person for it okay so you want to target by user inputted information this is usually age sex location education religion uh, politics maybe um, job title marital status etc etc okay so these can be used to actually filter and zero in on the kind of person that you want and make sure if you've got any competition out there look at what their ads look like all right sometimes they don't even know who they're targeting as well if you really want to amuse yourself if you see a guru or somebody who's a competitor in your field if they have an ad that's running through look at the people that have liked that ad you notice that those people are not even relevant to your target audience because they're just spraying and praying with their marketing all right so just don't follow people just because you know they they maybe present themselves stronger or they look like they know what they're doing you just need to specifically know exactly what you're offering your your clients you should know exactly who needs what you're offering them and you should know exactly how much it will cost that client or how much that client is worth to you as soon as you get them in that way you'll be able to budget more and you'll be free in as much as how you want to target your audiences all right you also have to know how to create um look-alike audiences etc etc all that stuff I'm not gonna go into the nitty-gritties but what I really want to talk about is you know the facts of should you really be advertising on Facebook all right um, we all know I think up until recently they have Facebook itself has got um, 1.7 billion uh, monthly active users you know what I mean so that means of that 1.7 billion they have plus or minus half of those people that are actively daily using the platform of course it's traffic but is that traffic your customer all right you really need to know who your ad is specifically going to and if your customer is on Facebook and how many times they're gonna see that ad in order for them to make an informed decision all right I'll tell you something McDonald's advertises to people nine times six to nine times a day all right the reason being it takes a cognitive notice of anything six to nine times for them to actually register to them that I need to buy um, you know a Big Mac or a coca-cola all right so do you have deep pockets enough to make sure that your ad has been seen six to eight times by that particular person you want to reach out to okay and if they have seen you six to eight times do you have enough content at the background that even if they don't go ahead with the offer that you have at least they'll watch a video at least they'll read a blog at least they will see something that will then elevate them to go to the next thing your ad should not be the be it and end all your ad should just be leading to the next process okay so what's the next process after somebody goes on to your ads you know you go on to your 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 landing page maybe you sell them something immediately or you want them to attend a webinar you need to be selling the next step all the time now do you have that in your back end or do you just have an ad Matthew says how do I change from impression to click 
Um, I think when you're in your power editor there, there's an option that gives you, do you want to, um, you know, uh, target per, per, uh, per impression or do you want to target per click? I could, I could show you a little bit later on once I've finished there. Okay. So even though everybody else is on Facebook, a lot of people that are on there cannot Facebook. And so you shouldn't fall prey to that because some of the leads that are on Facebook is people like you and me. Okay, you're not gonna just jump off your chair and look at somebody's stuff just because they're presenting it to you. All right, so you want to really, really make sure that when you do present an offer, it is congruent to what that person really wants. Now, how do you do that? You find out what they want through, you know, being active in groups. You find out what they want through asking genuine questions, guys, on your profile, okay? And Chris says, why, how, when, what, when advertising? Oh, yeah, pretty much, you know? You know, you, you when you pretty much advertising there, it's just bringing people to your stuff. It's not the be it and end all of how you get the leads, all right? First of all, when you go out and, and start paying money to Facebook, you need to know how much it actually costs you to acquire a client. Okay? So if your client, um, you know, lifetime value is say $10,000, you should be able to pay at least 10% of that amount in order to acquire that client. If you cannot acquire that client at that fee, you're attracting the wrong person. Okay? So you really need to sit down and look at when your client comes in, what are they getting? All right. What is unique to you that they cannot get anywhere else? Because yes, you might have an ad, but as soon as they get there, it's the same rhetoric stuff that they see anywhere else. That's the reason why it doesn't convert. Okay. It's not the problem of the media. It's not the problem of whatever is your message is going to the wrong market. All right. So Facebook advertising usually fails for two reasons, guys. And usually it's either the business didn't have a solid strategy in place to start off with, or they just approached Facebook with the wrong intentions. Some people just go in and think, okay, I'll put in $500 in Facebook. I should get something from it. Ask yourself, what are you hoping to get out of that 500? Is it leads? Is it connections? Is it people that will go to your landing page? Is it people that will read? What is the call to action that you're putting against and betting against that $500? All right. So you don't have any intention or any sort of strategy in place and you're just plying in money and hoping an ad is going to convert. Now, when the ad is there, there's going to be other factors as well that are going to, um, you know, change the whole scenario the picture the offer how your hook stands out and the copy that's on the ad all of those things do we consider that all right so the most important thing that people should keep in mind is that facebook ads are a passive system meaning you know they're shown when the consumer is not necessarily in buying mood all right somebody is just scrolling through facebook and they're waiting for their kid to finish playing soccer and there you are you've got your state-of-the-art ad hey guys buy my blueprint that person is not in buying mood at all you know what i mean they're not in that position they have not been invited to an office to know that they're being sold to no they can still score past that and facebook counts that as an impression facebook already says you know what prosper somebody has seen your blueprint now you pay us Right, so you want to be really careful about how you're doing it, and that's the reason why I say at least a minimum six times that somebody sees your ad. All right, so if I'm out there, you know, watching football with my friends, and it's it's commercial time or it's it's half time, and then I start scrolling, you know what I mean? And maybe you know, in the news feed is like, um, um, you know, my coach. Um, my sister, my brother, my father, my mother, and then an ad, and then my wife, you know, you, you and then Soka comes in, you, you already lost them, all right? So you want to make sure that that's not your only strategy because people are doing stuff when they get to see your ads, all right? So sometimes direct selling on Facebook can therefore be a bit tricky because people are not going to be buying stuff as soon as they see your ad. Okay, and the success of this really, really depends on what do you have in the back end. So if you 
do not have a funnel that has maybe um, a landing page where they can pick up at least a, a small tire product and maybe then go on to book another maybe a webinar where they can actually sit down they might not go as far as watching your VSL or your video sales letter all right so all of that you should really consider do I have the things in place for when somebody comes onto my website either they watch they listen to or they leave an email address some people are just putting out an ad right and then it's going on to their entire website what is that gonna help people you know so your landing page has to be specific to the offer that brought them out of the social media platform in the first place okay so I think there's a guy his name is um Tyson I, I call him Mike Tyson Matthew Tyson he's a he's a marketing strategist you know he he says that um, the most effective uses use of Facebook ads you know for small businesses is usually to bring out brand awareness and a bit of social exposure all right but are you going to be competing with bigger companies when you can actually just do it on your facebook profile you need to weigh out those options i mean doing a live like this and then maybe after you see this and you see an ad of mine in the news in the in the news feed it breeds that familiarity all right because if no one has seen you before they would not notice your ad so you want to have done a few things so that when you then target people, they already are like, you know what? I know this guy. I know what he's talking about. Let me see what he's offering. All right. So your strategy should not just be the ads. You should have a comprehensive strategy that goes in from email to blogs, all the content so that you position yourself first. So that when somebody sees your ad, they're already familiar with your brand. They're already familiar with what it is that you're offering. Okay. And Chris says people buy from people. Exactly. People are buying from people they know, like, and trust. Okay. And your Facebook ads should have an intention. All right. What's the intention? What are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to gain leads? You know, because you can't sell to somebody like we said already, all right? So there's lead capture, um, you know, ads that you can put on so that you can then sell to them later on, bring them into your world, okay? Because Facebook is, like I say, is common ground, all right? No one is listening to you at that particular time. Your ad should have an intention. Are you putting it out there to bring people into your world so that you can then sell them later? All right, because I, I want to tell you a big secret within marketing, and I think a few people would know the blog still is still under the radar. Yeah, the blog is still under the sales radar. Everything else, people know they're being sold to. But if you say to somebody, Here's a blog that I wrote, all right, they automatically take their gut down because they don't expect you to sell them through a blog they think you're giving them information all right so if you're bringing people from social media where they're being bombarded and sold to every single day you just want to bring them across to your website where you can at least talk to them all right and make it safe for them all right so half of the time some people don't see the roi because they don't know what their intention is with the ad in the first place okay more specifically they don't even know how to actually measure how engaged you know people are with the ads they don't even know whether they're looking for impressions whether they're looking for reach whether they're looking for likes shares clicks all the 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 the, the you know measurable uh, things that are out there so if you're not sure of all the things that i've just talked about if you've got an ad going at the moment shut it down now look at exactly what are you hoping to achieve with that ad is it doing you any service except just writing up a a, a, a bill that's going to eat into your lunch money all right so you need to analyze all these metrics in real time and just adjust your facebook ads along the way and see if you're actually making any impact because some of the times yes your facebook might be shown to people but are these the people that you really want to talk to you know you need to figure out your goal okay how much money do i really want to make 
All right. And when you figure out how much money do you really want to make, find out how much products can you actually sell to reach that financial goal and find out how many people need to buy those products in order for you to reach out that goal. Then figure out how much it's worth to get those people to fit in to get that financial goal. As soon as you know those numbers, you can now then go out and figure out that you only need six people to buy your product in order for you to reach your monthly target or your yearly target. Have you ever thought about that? And then all you do now is put all your life resources into going to look for just those six people. Because if you go in and plow in the money, I've got a client right now who is putting in 27K a month. I can show you guys if you wanna see it, all right? 27,000 a month. So do you think you can compete with somebody like that? You know, we're getting maybe, yes, between 200 and 300, you know, opt-ins a, a day because of that money. Because he is selling insurance. You know, he doesn't care who gets it. You know, his market is broad. But you are probably a coach, a consultant, and all you need is just six people to train or six people to coach. So you can't go out and pledge in and splash in without really knowing your numbers. Because if you don't know your numbers, then you're just wasting money. And that's a lot of lunch money that maybe if you don't know what to do with it, wire me that money, PayPal me that cash and I will show you how I spend it. All right. So in conclusion, should you use paid ads or Facebook ads? You know, Facebook ads are affordable. They're effective. But do you need them? All right. And in fact, 92% of, you know, all the marketers will tell you go on Facebook and do yada, yada, yada. But if you don't have a system behind If you don't have, um, you know, a landing page or some sort of product that recuperates your Facebook ad spend as soon as somebody buys something, then you probably know I'm right about this. You're losing money. Figure out what your client is worth to you, the lifetime value of that client, and then just really figure out how much you need to buy into that client what what's your client acquisition um cost and just put in that money towards either content and you know spread yourself in as much as when somebody does then come in from an ad they're not just you know coming into a party and there's no music playing in there because a lot of people i'm working with coaches and consultants that are just being told put out ads put out ads put out ads but they don't have a system or anything that works behind the scenes for them to actually then cultivate and nurture those leads and that's just money that's just being wasted all right so if you've got blogs or if you've got videos or any of that stuff you want to put a pixel on that Harvest that pixel a little bit later and then just put ads towards people that have already just seen your stuff. All right. Not to everybody else who hasn't had an opportunity to see you because you know what? The more people are being drawn away from TV and um, radio. I was just reading some somewhere that now the media scope is based on social media right now. So all the heavy heaters that were paying for 30 second commercials are just plying that money back into Facebook and Facebook is like, oh, there is money like this. So they will put up their rates. And you are just spinning your wheels and, you know, maybe getting a lead here, a lead there. But then you're not probably, you know, creating a platform that people would actually, you know, get, um, you know, information from you and, you know, move on. Because you know what? This person that has just clicked on your ad, it doesn't mean you own them. They just looked at whatever shiny object you gave them. And if it's not of interest, well, they go. All right. So same goes with Instagram. You really want to make sure that you figure out exactly how these things work and how you can plug yourself into the matrix. Sometimes you can actually just go out there, show a bit of love and actually get clients. All right. Unless you really want to go on very, very large scale, then maybe. Yes. But I'm speaking to the person that's not paying more than five hundred dollars a day in their ad spend. If you're paying ten dollars, twenty dollars. Just hold your horses a little bit, put out content, put a pixel on that content and then advertise to the people that are within that pixel and expand that audience. And you will see a whole big difference in the way that you're going to be getting leads. Right. There's a lot of people out there. There's one point seven billion people. You can't just be, you know, you know, sending them um, your ads because at the end of the day, they don't care about you. 
You want to work with the people that you've given value to. So if you're doing, um, I'll give you an example of what I do. And this is exactly how I think you want to do it. I do a live like this and then I download the video, put it onto a blog. Now it's on my platform. It's no longer on Facebook. I own this content now. Okay. From there, I then um, have it, um, you know, I also have it on YouTube and from YouTube, I'm using it to gain um, customers. That's the reason why I've got f two different mics. So I'm getting leads from YouTube using the same video. And when it goes onto a blog, my blog has a pixel on it. That pixel, I then harvest it every week or every two weeks. I send ads specifically to those people. All right. And that's the reason why it converts a whole lot more. You know why? These people have already known, liked and trusted me. And when they see an ad of mine in the newsfeed, they just jump on it. All right. So you want to maybe start creating that sort of value and putting a pixel on your blogs and then just advertising to that pixel audience. Let me know if this is going to make a difference to you because I see ads and half the time it's my job. I look at them and I see that the people that are liking the ad are people from Bujumbura or people in Lebanon there. Who or how are those people going to help your bottom line if you're living in the States, in Australia or in Britain? All right. So we can see it. I can see it. I just thought I'd come in and figure out and then and, and maybe just go in and say if you are uh, not pixeling your blogs or if you're not actually working towards gate getting real value out there nobody's seeing your ads all right in the meantime i really hope this has been um uh, pr uh, f um, you know uh, useful if you see i always constantly refer to the blueprint if you want to get your hands on a copy of the online prosperity blueprint it will help you capture the right kind of audience send out the right kind of content to them by engaging them and positioning you as a person that actually knows how to um you know um how to serve people's problems and you connect with them and then you then convert Today's topic was more about converting. How do you actually convert these people and make them into lifelong customers? Right. Now, Chris says, ask them to share. 80% of people are willing to refer. Uh, the only 10% ask for a referral. The easiest way is to generate more leads. Thank you so much, Chris. I forgot about that. And guys, if you do like what we talk about here every day, please share this video. Please share it. Please share it. And Chris, thanks for, for um, bringing me that um, opportunity. And also, if you want to watch a bit more of these other videos, I have them all lined up on YouTube. You want to subscribe to the Leave Long Digital um, YouTube um, account. And there's also one more thing here. Uh, Hi, Prosper. What a great point about putting your video on all social media avenues love that oh yes trish i do do that because then at least you just create the content once and i use this mic and i uh, chop it up into a podcast but you know i've got a team that does that for me in the meantime guys thank you so much and please do share this video if you can um i really enjoy making it and i hope you also enjoy watching them if there's anything that you guys want me to talk about please also make sure we do do that all right in the meantime Bye.